I'm on a quest to watch all the movies and TV shows about the tales of King Arthur and his knights. Let's check out everything that came out in the early 1970s. Lancelot du Lac is a French film that came out in 1970. This is the classic tale of Sir Lancelot, who after being raised by Vivienne, the Lady of the Lake, joins King Arthur's court and then ventures out to prove his valor in a series of dangerous deeds and extraordinary feats. He does this all the while falling deeply in love with the wife of his king, whom he will never betray. This is based closely on works sometimes called the Lancelot Grail Cycle, written in French by unknown authors from the early 13th century. This is set in the 13th century with many fantasy elements. We meet the Fisher King in his disappearing castle and Merlin who is trapped in a tree. Or in the air, I wasn't quite sure. There is also a strong religious presence. I was only able to find this in French with abysmal English subtitles, so I can't say I fully understood everything. I enjoyed the fairy tale tone of the movie and all the settings and costumes, but I didn't find it particularly engaging. This won't land in my top 10 Arthurian shows, but would be up to trying it again with better subtitles. 135 minutes, not rated, but I'd say 13 plus. Arthur of the Britons is a British television show that ran from 1972 to 1973. The young Celtic leader Arthur wants to make peace between the Celts and the Saxons. He is a skilled warrior, but more importantly, a cunning tactician. He fights together with his friend Kai, born a Saxon, and the man who raised them. The first half of the series is filled with morality-driven episodic adventures. The second half digs more into the characters' individual stories. Tired of the fairy tale and want something that tries to actually be historically accurate? Here you go. No castles or knights in shining armor here. This bears little resemblance to any of the old written works the original story is based on. Even most of the characters we're used to, like Lancelot, Guinevere, and Merlin, are absent. This is early Dark Ages real-world Britain. This really should be called Kai of the Saxons. Yes, Arthur is a large role, but really most of the episodes are centered around his friend Kai. I enjoyed it overall as a Dark Ages young adventure series, but change Arthur's name and most people wouldn't have recognized it. 24 episodes, each about 30 minutes, not rated, but I'd say 13 plus. Gwen and the Green Knight is a British film from 1973. Arthur has grown old and his court has become lazy. Only a young squire Gwen still dreams of the honor and bravery of being a knight. In his quest to fulfill his promise to the Green Knight, he spends a year going through trials which will teach him different life lessons. Also, there's a pretty girl he likes. The story's main premise is based on the original tale of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight from the 14th century. However, the trials he goes through are based on different Arthurian tales. Vane, the Knight of the Lion from 1180, and the tale of Sir Gareth in Thomas Mallory's Le Mort de Arthur. We are in full Arthurian fairy tale land. There are mysterious lands that have been forgotten, magic rings that can turn you invisible, and many references to fae. Background references to both pagan gods and Christianity. I enjoyed parts of this, but overall found my attention wavering in and out. I could see kids enjoying the sword fights and gallantry of it all, but the plot and any kind of character development is lacking. The special effects were laughable, but the artwork depicting the seasons are gorgeous. Probably won't watch it again, but certainly don't regret watching it. 93 minutes. Not rated, but I think all ages is fine. Lancelot du Lac is a French film from 1974. It's the end of Camelot. The knights who survived the quest for the Holy Grail return battered and disillusioned. We are basically here to watch the fallout of the tragic love story between Lancelot and Guinevere. Mordred is there stirring up trouble. And the young and still hopeful Gwen does everything he can to prevent the king and kingdom from falling apart. This is based partly on the Lancelot Grail Cycle. 
The film has a French medieval look and feel. However, at times the sets, props, and costumes, possibly accidentally, let slip some more modern pieces into the scenes, like modern door handles and hats. Pretty sure that round table just came from the local hardware store. All of the fantastical elements are taken out. Honestly, I thought this was awful. It's just depressing. The actors showed almost no emotion throughout the whole movie, except for maybe Gwen. The way it was shot was odd, too. A lot of scenes end with just us staring at random set pieces for a few extra seconds, like the back of a tent or horse legs, while we hear armor clanking in the background. The end was also super abrupt and unsatisfying. But hey, that's just me. Maybe it's someone else's favorite movie. 85 minutes, rated 13+, plus, but personally, I would have upped that due to the amount of blood. Monty Python and the Holy Grail is a British film from 1975. King Arthur and his squire, Patsy, first must travel throughout Britain in search of men to become knights of the round table. Along the way, there are many shenanigans. Arthur debates whether swallows can carry coconuts, fights the Black Knight, who is quite resilient even as he loses all his limbs, and eventually takes the knights to Camelot only to change his mind after a musical number because tis a silly place. They specifically state that this takes place in 932 AD. But you know, this is a 100% comedy and not to be taken seriously. We have a plague going on, a witch trial, and modern police. This is not for you if you're looking for a plot that makes any kind of sense. Unless you're allergic to straight-up comedy, this is a classic must-see. Personally, I am a fan of the Holy Hand Grenade and the Knights Who Say Me. 92 minutes, rated 16+. Plus. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we'll be checking out everything from the second half of the 1970s. Happy watching!